Hi everyone, I'm Mike and welcome to this new video dedicated to the Pimax Crystal. It's been almost a year since I started using the Crystal. I've had the opportunity to test features and accessories in advance, find optimal settings, and I'm here to update you on the news revealed by Pimax at the last Frontier 2024 event. A well-known Chinese company has announced the imminent release of two new versions of the Pimax Crystal, and once again I would say they have outdone themselves. In this video I want to focus on one of the headsets, the Pimax Crystal Lite. The Crystal Lite is designed for the mainstream, the largest part of the market, because not everyone can or wants to spend $2000 on a top-of-the-line headset. So they decided to balance the specifications of the crystal by removing some features but maintaining the exceptional quality that only the crystal can offer. Accessible to everyone with the starting price of $699, more or less the price of the Quest 3. But we are on another level, let me illustrate the features for you. First of all, they have optimized the ergonomics improve the rear foam and reduce the weight by 30%. Exactly a whooping 310 grams less than the crystal by removing the rear battery, eye tracking system, cooling system and the motors for electronic IPD adjustment. The lenses are the same as the crystal, so glass spherical lenses with a pixel density of 35 ppd. The difference with the crystal being that they are not interchangeable. The Crystal is the first headset to use glass aspherical lenses that allow for unprecedented image clarity. This has earned Pimax several nominations and awards such as SAS 2024. Glass lenses are a bit more difficult to produce and slightly heavier, but the benefits are significant. The resolving power is much higher with glass lenses and indicates the ability to differentiate two lines on an object. In VR terms, this refers to much higher image clarity, and not only that, the eye box of the aspherical glass lenses is larger compared to plastic lenses. Everyone's eye shape is different, and the eyes are also spheres that constantly move, requiring specific optical properties to correct eye movements. Pimax glass lenses are better adapted to reduce optical distortion, often called pupil swim. I wanted to mention this about the lenses because I never talked about it and it is extremely important. So we say that the crystal light does not need batteries. The necessary power is taken from the display port cable. The head and controller motion tracking system is the same as the crystal, namely integrated inside-out tracking. So, there is no need to buy base station to track movements. However, if someone intends to use them, even with the light, it is possible to use the base station to track movement through the faceplate called Lighthouse, which is sold as an, op as an optional accessory. One thing that made me think is the fact that they removed the eye tracking system, which allowed for insane performance, thanks to dynamic foveated rendering. So the spontaneous question is, what about performance? Well, they have come up with three different methods to improve performance. The first method is fixed foveated rendering 2.0, which unlike dynamic foveated rendering is fixed. The central part of your view will be rendered in high definition and the peripheral zone in lower resolution, gaining from 10 to 30% more frames per second. As the second method, the crystal light can take advantage of upscaling. If you have a mid-range or high-end GPU, you can run most games at native resolution. But if you have a low-end GPU like the RTX 2060 for example, you can choose to run the game at a resolution of 2160 for 2160 pixels per eye, which is the resolution of the Reverb G2 and then upscale to 2880 for 2880. Even if you run a game at a lower resolution, the extremely high resolution of the crystal light panels will offer you an image and colors that you have never seen before in virtual reality. 
and I can guarantee you that the astronomical pixel density and the total absence of the screen door effect make even an old title look next-gen. Personally, I was impressed when I tried Falcon BMS for the first time with the Crystal. Falcon BMS is based on a very old engine, but with the Crystal it feels like a completely different simulator. The third method proposed to improve performance is variable refresh rate. The Crystal offers the possibility through, the, uh, through its software called Pimax Play to choose from various refresh rates including 60, 72, 90 and 120 Hz, giving you the opportunity to lock the, the, the refresh rate of the panels, stabilizing the frame rate and have a smoother image. The Crystal Lite comes with the two basic controllers of Pimax, which are very similar to the controllers of the Quest 2, but have a non-replaceable rechargeable battery. The Crystal Lite is available in two versions, one equipped with QLED panels without local dimming and at a slightly higher cost, a version with QLED plus mini LED panels, therefore with local dimming, like the Crystal. Local dimming is a technology used in displays such as TVs and computer monitors that allows for more precise control over the brightness level of different areas of the screen, resulting in a clearer, more vibrant and more engaging image. Next to the Quest 3, the Pimax Crystal Lite comes with a significantly higher resolution. 2880 for 2880 compared to the 2064 for 2208 per eye. The panel is probably the feature that makes the generational leap in virtual reality. The Crystal Light panel cannot be compared to an LCD like that of the Quest 3. QLED technology is the advancement of LCD technology so it can only be superior. If we then add the mini LED panel, it is definitely unbeatable in terms of sharpness, colors and lighting. The Crystal Light also wins on refresh rates, of offering a wide choice, providing more control over performance optimization. The IPD range is the same, eye tracking is absent on both, Foveated rendering is fixed on both, but from what I've uh, read, uh, it doesn't work very well on the Quest 3. Motion tracking is similar, but on the Quest 3 is limited to the integrated system, while in the Crystal Light you have the possibility to use Base Station as well, obtaining more precise tracking. There's no contest on the lenses. The Crystal Light overwhelmingly wins with glass aspherical lenses compared to the plastic pancake lenses of the Quest 3. Audio is integrated on both and I can guarantee that it's excellent in the Crystal. The Crystal Light is not a standalone headset as the battery compartment has been removed so the chipset is a modified dual processor by Pimax and optimized for PC VR mode. The Quest 3 mounts an XR2 Snapdragon, the processor used in standalone headsets, but not optimized for PC VR, even though available. If you are interested and have 3 minutes, Pimax has asked me to share with you a survey with the aim of listening to what people have to say about the Crystal Light so that they can improve it according to your needs. So if you want to participate in the creation process of this ad set, spend 3 minutes to answer the questionnaire. I hope the video is helpful for you, stay tuned because in the next video I will talk about the Pimax Crystal Super, the second new version of the crystal that pushes the boundaries even further. We're talking about the pixel density close to that of the human eye, interchangeable panels, in short, the future of virtual reality. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and leave some comment. Thanks for watching and see you next time!